Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at BergzergArcade.com and today's tutorial number 100. So let's continue on where we left off in our last tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Unity and Mono Develop. Alright, so only control we had left to implement right now was our strafing. And for our strafing, since it moves us along the well, side to side, which is basically our X axis. If you uh, you think about, you know, Z is always pointing forward, Y is pointing up, then X is side to side. So we can just actually add that directly in here. So we'll say input dot get axis, and then whatever you named your axis. Whoops, no semicolon. My axis was called strafe, I believe. Not stage. And then we're also going to want to call the animation for it. But I don't really like the animation to go off while I'm running. I only want the animation for it to go off uh, if I'm only standing still. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this one here and this block here. And right before the else, I'm going to come down and I'm going to make an else if statement. And I'll just say input dot get button. Uh, the button we want, which is our strafe. And then I want to do something. And that something is just simply pay, play the <laughs> strafe animation. So let's save that off. I'll go back into Unity and let's test it out. So I'll start it up. I'm in game. So let's try standing still. Yep, strafing. Walking. It won't strafe, but it still moves me from side to side. And if I run, I can strafe as well without the animation. Great. So we pretty much have all of our movements down now. Uh, let's try looking at it now and figure out how we're going to implement this so we can just attach this script to anything in game that's going to need to move around and attack and everything else. But we can't attach it if we have all these input commands because every time we push a key, say if we have this attached to our mob, uh, that mob is going to perform the action. So we have to figure out a way to uh, get this to work, but not have direct input in. So we're going to have to use variables. And just in case anyone's wondering, we'll be using this giant here for our target dummy. So let's go back into model develop. Okay, so let's come down to our update function. And I'm going to want to move this all out of up update. And I'm going to put it into its own function. And since everything here has to do with moving around, but we will be adding more stuff later on, such as attacking. I'm just going to call this actions. So let me just shrink this down right below update. I'm going to make a new function, which will be private. It does not return anything. And I'm going to call it action picker. And for now, it's not going to accept any variables. And I'll just go ahead and cut and paste this whole thing in there. So I'll just go up to the top of update, come all the way down. You could probably move the leave the move in there, but we'll get rid of it anyway. There we go. Update should be empty. It's quite a bit of code. Make sure you get it all. And then I'll post it in there. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm eventually going to set it up to be a finite state machine where the mob just picks the action it's supposed to be performing and it goes from there. Okay, so we're going to need some, some variables to be replaced in here. Uh, one is going to be uh, for rotating how much. Uh, and we'll basically leave one for all the different keys that we have assigned. So we'll head up to the top. And let's set up some enumerations for moving our character. I uh, will make them public for now. Well, 
No, we'll leave, we'll leave them as private because I don't see them needing to be accessed outside of this class, at least not this enumeration. And the first one we'll make will be just called turn. The three possible values we can have for turn will be left, which we're going to set to be equal to negative one. We'll say none, which will be equal to zero. And let's say right, which will be equal to one. And then, of course, we're going to want to make our own instance of it. So we'll make this private and it's of type turn. And I'm just going to call it underscore lowercase turn. Now let's give this a, a quick test. So I'm going to come down to update. Well, here, actually, let's, let's go into the start function. We're underneath our animation play, and we'll set its default value. We'll say turn with the underscore. It's going to be equal to turn dot, and let's just try left, because that's the negative value. In our update, we're going to actually call action picker, just for testing purposes. And... We don't actually need this line anymore. Uh, we don't need to check to see if they're pushing the button to rotate. We just have to check to see if they, you know, if they are pushing the button, then rotate it. So I'm actually going to get rid of that whole if block and just leave what was inside. So we're going to take where we have input axis rotate player, and let's just put in turn. Now it is an enumeration, and we're going to want the integer value of it. So I'm just going to say int in front of it. So we've typecast it. So if we start it up, and when we go, our character should just be spinning around left. So let's take a look. And there he goes. And of course, you have the other keys you can use. OK. That worked. So. Let's set one up for moving forward and backward. I'm going to get rid of the action picker that we put in the update. And as well as at the end of our start, we'll get rid of the default value we assigned there. And I'm going to make another one here. Now this one will be private as well. And forward. And it'll have the same values. Left. It's going to be, oops, sorry, not left. We're going to have back, which is equal to negative one. And we'll say idle. Uh, we'll keep the same convention, none equal to zero. And we'll say forward is equal to one. And we'll come down. <clears throat> I'll make a private instance of that variable, so forward. And I'll just call it underscore forward. And I'm going to want to have some function that initializes these values. So I'm going to come down right before action picker. <clears throat> and I'll make a private function. I'll call it, it's not going to return anything, and I'll just call it init. Now it doesn't take any values. All it's going to do is just set the uh, all of our values up for us. So we'll say underscore turn is equal to advanced movement turn dot none. And we'll also want to change the forward value now. So forward is equal to advanced movement dot forward dot none I've got name I'm gonna go up and change that yes spelt it wrong and then I'm gonna take this forward variable since I'm down here go into action picker and right here I'm going to check to see if it does not equal action picker dot 
Oh, sorry, not action picker. It was forward. Dot none. We can come up here and put the value in up here, which is forward. And typecast it. Now run, we're just going to set to a Boolean value. So I'll come up to the top and I'll make it private. And it's of type bool and I'll just call it underscore run. Uh, let me see, we'll go down to init and set it to false. And down here, we'll just check to see what that value is. Now jump, we can handle jump the exact same way. So I'll come up, make a Boolean value for jump. Go down to init. jump equals false and just come down here and make the check now strafe strafe is kind of the exact same as turn as far as the values it needs so we're either going to be strafing left or right so I'm actually just going to use uh, the exact same enumeration we're using for turning because it, it will logically make sense. So I'm going to come up under forward because I want it up there. And I'm going to say private turn and I'll just do underscore strafe. I'll come down to my knit and do the same thing under the forward part. We'll just say that strafe is equal to advanced movement turn or whatever your this here is just your class name if anyone's wondering uh, you don't even actually need it you can just say turn uh, model development seems to put the class name in there for you it, it, either one should work but we'll set the value to none then I'm gonna cut that cut and paste that variable into the move direction part into the x-axis and of course we'll have to typecast it as an int and down here so we can just check to see if strafe does not equal zero it's underscore strafe does not equal advanced movement turn dot none uh, I think that's all of them that we needed to actually change. Uh, we're going to want to call init in the start function. So I'm going to do it right after the animation play. I'm going to get rid of update for now. I don't need it. And if I do, it's pretty easy to add back in. And I guess next we'll start working on some sort of uh, class that will take the input from the user and pass it on to this class. And you might notice that turn and forward the enumerations have the exact same values but the reason why I created another one for forward is because I wanted the variables to be different so a little more descriptive so I know that forward or what I'm calling it uh, for instance uh, what did I call it already I called it forward and I guess I could have called it walk but or move but I wanted to be able to know if I'm going backwards or forwards and this is actually supposed to be none. Uh, I think that's the autocomplete doing that. Now let me check down here just to make sure. Yeah. That should be none as well. Let me just quickly go into Unity and make sure there's no errors that pop up. And there's none. So next we're going to start working on a class that will take input from the user and send it to the scripts we want and basically get it to move. Then after that we can create some mob AI that will start moving the mob around based on the exact same script here. So I'll see you then. Bye bye.